and each bit of kibble can be used as a lure and a reward in training. Okay? So all we do is, we, every time we put the dog back in his crate, we give him a new kong. When you leave in the morning, you give him a kong. He will chew the kong, he'll be lying down. Why? You can't chew a kong standing up. You can't keep it still with your paw. Have you put your wrist over it? If you put your wrist over it, your elbow will be on the floor, so your butt will be on the floor. So a Kong chewing dog is chewing the Kong and being rewarded for chewing the Kong. He's not chewing the rest of the house. He is lying down, i.e. not running around, and he is quiet, i.e. not barking. You're going to eliminate the four biggest behavior problems, bam, 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 just by feeding your dog from a Kong instead of a bowl. Each bit of food that comes out rewards the dog for chewing the Kong, becoming a Kongaholic, for lying down, very important for your collie crosses, your Malinois and dogs like this, these, these, these dogs that like they're on steroids. Nope, they will now be, they can do their steroid thing in the park. But they come to your house, you say settle, they lie down. Because each bit of food rewards them for lying down. Okay? And for not barking. The dogs do not become recreational barkers. The actual numbers on this are, if you change how you feed, from bowl to Kong, within 24 hours, your dog is barking 90% less. It's unbelievable. I have numbers on this. It used to be a massive suitcase-sized computer I'd leave in people's homes, and it monitors the dog's behavior. How many steps, how many barks. We now have it down to a little gizmo this size that fits on the collar, and it graphs them out. So you can tell not just how many barks, Okay, but when they happen, so 6 a.m., 6 p.m. So let's say the dog is barking because you've gone to work and he's happy you've left. Separation fun. He doesn't bark when you're at home. Well, first of all, what's normal activity? This is normal activity. Dogs are crepuscular. They have two activity peaks, dawn and dusk. We are diurnal. We have one activity peak in the middle of the day. Cats are nocturnal. They have one activity peak at night. But dogs have two activity peaks. Well, obviously, they're not going to bark when you're getting ready for work. The dog knows you don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> they aren't going to chew, wee, or bark. The zero behavior, the instant you leave, massive amounts of weeing, pooping, chewing, digging, barking. Because this bit, he's been inhibited while you're there. Because you're the killjoy. Every time he does anything and acts like a dog, you tell him to shut up or you punish him. So enormous peak, then they fall asleep in the day, then a little peak here. No barking when you're at home. So we give the dog the Kong when we leave, and when we come home, you don't greet the dog. Don't say hello to your dog till he has a Kong in his mouth. It's such a simple procedure. So like with Zuzu, I mean, she got it in three days, man. This is not a mouthy dog. Um, she's a herding breed. All of our dogs have been like, you know, Malamutes, Rotties, uh, Pit Bulls, uh, American Bulldogs, French Bulldogs, th this sort of thing, Mutts. And um, she just wasn't interested in playing tug of war or any of that stuff, okay? Um, within three days, she became a chew toy aholic. Because I'd come home and I'd greet the other dogs and say, hey, Dune, how you doing? You had a good day? You go, give us a kiss, you go, oh, he's a good dog, that's it. And Zuzu's here like, what about me? What about me? And I would kiss these two dogs and ignore her. Then I would say, Zuzu, where's your Kong? And about the third day, she, goes, <gasps> she runs and gets a Kong. I say, hi, Zuzu, do you have a good day? It's as simple as that. Jekyll and Hyde, you're not going to greet the non-chew toy dog. Why do we do this? Because if the dog wakes up here, before you're home, you're going to get high levels of activity. It's much better that the first thought in her brain is, oh, my owner will be home, oh, better get a Kong. So now she's lying down and chewing. So this is what we've got to take care of. With the owner absent misbehaviors that are doing it because you try to control behavior with punishment. Instead of teaching the dog where to pee, what to chew, when to bark, you just punish them for doing these things. It happens when you're gone. What about a dog with separation anxiety? Absolutely different picture. You get out of bed, they already are panicking. 
They know what day of the week it is. They know you're going to work. Just you getting up. You know, I'm not even talking simple things like the time you set the alarm or the clothes you put on or the routine you do, you're cleaning your teeth, taking a poop, shaving, making coffee. You know, it's just when you wake up, they know, oh shit, it's Monday. And they start to stress. And you can tell it, the number of paces graphed out just does this. And then you're at work. Then you come home. So now we can diagnose between separation and anxiety, they need help. By all means, give them a drug. Because we've diagnosed they're anxious. These dogs, though, are certainly not anxious. They're having a riot. 